Hello everyone, I'm Chris and welcome to my channel. Um, for those of you that have been watching my channel and were eagerly awaiting uh, part four of my first uh, scale scenes build, which was the coal shed, um, I sincerely apologise for the delay. And I know it's been quite some time, but I, I will explain why. It will not take long, I'll assure you, and then we'll go into it. So, uh, those of you that follow my channel will be aware that I'm diagnosed with complex PTSD. Um, I'm, I'm a lot better, thank you, uh, but uh, you still have to deal with your inner demons. PTSD never goes away. And the thing is, is when I finished the coal shed and I looked at it, I was so gutted and disappointed at my effort that uh, I just thought, that's it, I'll put it aside and I'll come back to it. And uh, quite a while has gone on. Um, so having put it aside, um, I've been looking at a lot more things with regards to scale, scale scenes and uh, one of the things that's helped is I, um, I did recently join the uh, Scale Scenes Modelers group on Facebook. Brilliant. Um, highly recommend it. Wish I'd joined it a long time ago. A lot of help on there, a lot of encouragement um, and some of the buildings on there are just unbelievable. So. Uh, yeah, I'm better in that respect. The other reason uh, for the delay is um, I got a chest infection. Now, most people, chest infection, two, maybe three weeks at the most, and then they're better. Well, I've had it for considerably longer. Uh, and the reason being is, apart from uh, unable to get an appointment with your GP, uh, e-consult is switched off because they, they're they too busy with all the messages on there. You can't go to the reception and book an appointment anymore. They don't like it. And of course, when you ring, uh, you know, two hour wait, or maybe three hour wait to get answered. I can't be bothered with that. So um, it's a home recipe from the missus, a lemon and, oh, I forgot, what was it? Le uh, lemon and honey. Yeah, honey and lemon drip drinks hot. Um, really good. Um, makes you feel a lot better, especially when you go to bed at night. Um, the reason why I'm get, having trouble getting over the chest infection uh, is I, I'm self, um, sorry, I've been diagnosed a long time ago with, with uh, obstructive sleep apnea. Now, in order to keep my driving license and drive, I have to use a machine called a CPAP, and that stands for I've got it here somewhere. Hold on, let's have a look. Yeah, it's a continuous positive airway pressure what it does is it continuously blows air down your gullet your throat and it keeps it open um, sleep apnea it closes and of course your brain then suffers with sleep uh, uh, oxygen deprivation so uh, and that's a killer eventually so i'll be fine as long as i use my CPAP machine but you can imagine the air being blown down there every time when you've got a chicken on your chest that night it's absolutely moider um, so I've still got the cough now, but it's not too bad. So again, if I do start coughing, I do apologize. So let's get into um, the model itself. So the first thing on looking at it, I find it quite tatty looking. Um, now it is my very first attempt. And no, I don't have one of those plates that revolve around. Now, the door was cut too short, but you can get more doors on that. That's not a problem. Um, the window, I find exceptionally hard to do, especially the windowsill. You can see it's all sort of frayed and lifted. I think I put too much glue on there. Um, and when I was trying to stick it, it tore and whatever. I presume there's a, a good way of doing it. Um, but... Uh, it's for me to find out I guess the other thing as well is when you look at the roof from the above you can see it doesn't fit properly um, now looking talking to people on scale scenes uh, sorry on, on the modelers group they have all said um, yeah your first attempt will be pretty poor your second gets better by your third it the difference is unbelievable and the more you do the better you get so yeah I could appreciate that, but it's nice to be told that. Uh, secondly, um, 
there are going to be more tips, I gather, to, especially how to do the windowsill. Uh, um, so that will be it will be a, an asset. The other thing I've found, and although it appears square, um, it, it doesn't look square. And I'll put the old, uh, um, oh, what do you call it, the old gadget that goes along one way and the other. That, again, that's PTSD. You forget the names of things. Uh, it's not a T-square, but you know what I mean, a right-angled. And it appears square, and yet when I'm looking at it, it doesn't. The roof doesn't fit, and the only thing I can work out is that when I was cutting it, I was cutting the the, the uh, cardboard um, without my glasses on. But more importantly, I think you really need to use, a, you know, one of those big microscope things that's got a light on it, and I should be using that all the time. I'm not thinking that I can do a lot without it. Uh, I'm quite sure that once I use that, um, it will be better. And also, there are cutting techniques um, of which you have to practice at, I'm told. And I've not been doing uh, a lot of cutting, but I do feel that I can get better in that respect. And I think that will all add to the building of it. Um, but yeah, there you are. It's my first attempt. You can see I was I was very disappointed. All right, there's no guttering on there or downpipes. I cheated. I have bought some ratio uh, sets to do it with, but when I realised the condition of this uh, monstrosity, I thought I'm not going to waste it on there. But I will have a go. Um, the other thing as well is it is such a small item to do and extremely finicky. I'm just wondering whether sometimes that's the best uh, item to start with. Maybe something a little bit bigger would be better. Um, so I've had a go at that. I don't need one for my layout. I will try something else, but I won't go through the ins and odds and outs of how I started like I did with this. So that is the end of my first build. Um, any comments, criticism? Yeah, feedback, love it. You send it. Um, the other reason why there was a delay in um, getting the video out is that... Uh, I have changed my room here now it was if I show you now so if I pan back here you'll all be aware of this area this is not just only my computer desk but it's also my modeling area and of course it was suggested to me well why don't you put a table at the other end and make that your modelers area especially as it's under the window so let's get and up so this study man cave whatever you want to call it is still a work in progress at the moment so i'm now in the entrance to it it's not a very big room um so that is now my computer desk nothing else just my computer desk now if i swing it round i've been altering the shelves and restacking them but over this side here i've got another desk now that's exactly the same as the one I've got up the far end. It's a, it's an IKEA Malmo desk, no longer made in that colour or, or of that type, um, and I got it on eBay for just over thirty quid. It's brand new, so I got a result there. But I have put it in there. I've had to realter that shelving unit there. Um, I've stacked it up higher on the bottom there, and there's a result, a reason for that. One is I wanted it to go above the. Uh, radiator and secondly when i sit at it and i'm working um i want it up higher so i'm closer to the uh, item i'm working on so uh, and it does it's much better like that so that's going to be my new working uh, desk modeling desk uh, and i will be doing painting there etc and the beauty of it you've got natural light coming from the window um, and being a window, if I do my spraying, if I do decide to get an air spray, um, it's going to be ideal for opening the window and venting it out there as well. And of course, you'll see my face mask, which uh, I've had that for years. It's an absolute godsend for trying to clear your chest. I highly recommend one of them. Um, so that's it. So, yes, a very short video. Oh, got to have your tea. A very short video. Um, not been up in the loft. Uh, still can't do anything up there until I get it insulated. Like I said, I can't afford that at the moment. Um, but one of the things I have been doing is I've been researching uh, 
rakes for my um, my layout. Now, um, my area, errors, um, and I've printed out one of those error things here. I'll be covering um, error 3, 1923 to 47, and error 4, which is uh, 48 to 56, good year 56, and error 5, 56 to 68, roughly. Um, maybe not going in that far along. Um, so they're the three periods that I'll be covering. Um, so I've been working out rakes for them, and very interesting. Um, the sole reason is that um, I never realised what went on in my area. Now, just along the road from here, um, we have Lavern, and there's a, a walk going up from the old railway track from Chichester to Midhurst. And I think it's called Centurion Walk or something like that. Um, the trains were running up there right, um, I think, uh, up until about 85, maybe a bit later. And what they were collecting was chestnut um, wood, um, I don't know, making fences, chestnut fencing. Um, they also were collecting grain from the farmers around there and also, and I didn't know this, grown in West Sussex they grew a lot of sugar beet and that was collected up there as well. In fact there was an actually a, a large area just by Lavent Railway Station where the local farmers would deliver their sugar beet and it was loaded up and uh, taken to a sugar beet factory. Um, I think most of them were up north or in, in um, East Anglia. So working out what I'm going to be building, especially for those three periods, uh, has been very interesting. So uh, naturally I'm going to have coal, uh, long coal rakes, um, but yeah, I was thinking of sugar beet, um, so I've been researching uh, a, a lot on that. So if you're interested on the research I've been doing there and what I've come up with, um, let me know and I, I could put a, an update on that. Um, one thing I will add is that uh, I have been doing this um, um, with a, a very good friend of mine that I've made on here and uh, basically uh, his name's Mike and I've forgotten the name of his channel now hold on a minute here we go um, I've, got, I've got it here somewhere there we are uh, Model Railways Unlimited now he is my go-to guru he's um, he's a railway man or retired railway man um, his knowledge of the railways going right back is is unbelievable and of course he's got a channel on here um, and it's called um, uh, oh, well, 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 well. Right, it's called uh, model railways unlimited and in fact his last uh, his latest video has just come out uh, a review uh, of how to uh, sorry a review and how to of 10 commandments stone cast wagon loads and of course he's got sugar beet on there now mike does double o and i'm engaged but he's been assisting me with what i can put in rakes and how i should make a rake up uh, and what, what it would have been in for this area uh, it's been really interesting uh, he's got some cracking ones on coal um fuel uh, and uh, milk being delivered on the railways. And I say, you watch these channels and they're, they're all like history lessons, but they are really helpful in building your layout. So please have a look at that, especially his latest. And say, if you want uh, an update on what I've learned so far and how I'm gonna make it, then please um, let me know and uh, I'll get one on the way. Um, otherwise, I hope you're all well. Please keep safe and uh, hopefully in the next video it won't be too long away. Thanks very much. All the best.